whenever I get into a situation where I have the opportunity to talk about architecture, as my colleagues will tell me, I can get carried away. So I'm going to stay fairly close to some text with the um, intention of uh, being able to wrap this up and hopefully have an engaging panel discussion here um, this morning. Um, maybe indulge me here for just a moment. It's probably the only time you're going to see a slide of Palladio today, tomorrow, or the next day at CTBUH. But uh, let's see how I do with this. huh? Uh, the history of the facade is a history of the interface between often competing claims. In addition to its fundamental role in establishing the interface between inside and outside, which we all know, the facade must delineate claims for both openness and privacy, transparency, energy efficiency, maximum views but minimum glare, materiality and cost effectiveness, a unique identity as well as a response to the character of a place, and many, many more. While this was as true for Palladio 400 years ago as it is in our time, facades today are asked to resolve a greatly expanded field of parameters as performance, and I define that most broadly, becomes a key metric in assessing their value. Technology, and specifically new intuitive user interfaces, and what a moment this was, has transformed our ability to manage these competing claims and discover new expressive possibilities in the resolution. Building information modeling platforms facilitate integrated workflows by managing large quantities of information in a manner that was unimaginable three decades ago. More importantly, visual programming languages such as Grasshopper, and <clears throat> combined with energy modeling software and other plugins, give designers powerful new tools and processes to reconceptualize the relationship of design, between design, data, and performance. Nowhere are the innovative applications of these algorithmic tools more pronounced than in the design of facades, capable of responding to the complex and often conflicting demands of occupant, climate, urban, aesthetic, construction, and cost requirements. So what might it look like if we brought the full power of da data-driven design to address these competing claims embedded in architectural facade design? <clears throat> well, a recently completed project for the South Australian Health and Medical Research Institute makes a clear case for the transformative power of data-driven design methodologies. It's not a tall building. I do recognize that. <laughs> Through an in-depth briefing, uh, briefing process with researchers, the design of the enclosure for this 25,000 square meter low-rise research building, situated within a prominent civic greenway in the South Australian city of Adelaide, set out to optimize five key parameters simultaneously. Daylighting, views, glare, energy efficiency, and reinforcing the structure's unique form. Some plan diagrams. After significant optimization of geometry to increase modularity and continuity of the surface, daylighting, solar loading, and view requirements were mapped in three dimensions across the enclosure. You can see the plan form very specific plan form with, with um, service areas to the west, labs in the middle that open out to write up spaces, which then open out to fantastic views of river and the city beyond. Environmental analysis of a variety of enclosure systems, including high shading coefficient glazing, fritting, and exterior shading strategies was conducted. From this analysis, the exterior shading was determined to best optimize a diverse array of parameters as it yielded a significant reduction in heat gain, improved an average annual luminance levels while reducing glare, and an allowed unhindered views from the right up and shared research spaces to the river and city beyond. The parametric model 
that was being developed throughout the process was then further refined to respond to more specific programmatic and aesthetic requirements. Each triangular panel of the facade was assigned one of four panel types. You can see these over on the left-hand side. A shallow shade with glass to maximize daylight and views in common areas. Because one of those areas, like atriums and large social gathering spaces, to be dappled in sunlight. A deep shade with glass at right-up areas to maximize shading and minimize glare. A perforated metal panel with no glass at building system areas to allow for air to intake and exhaust. And metal screens with no glass at external peristitial zones on that western facade where the mechanical systems lie. The relationship between each of these panels was then scripted to allow a continuous transformation of panel types from one programmatic to the other. What you're seeing here in color is the various um, panel types and their transformation from one into the next through a series of incremental changes. Further scripting of the material amounts and costs were then utilized to optimize the number of panel types. We went from something like 2,500 different panel types down to about 18 the amount of shading, the embedded energy of shading materials, and even life cycle costing. Output from this model was even used to confirm fabrication costs in real time through the design process and to create, at the end, fabrication tickets for each of the individual shading elements. The result of this analysis is an optimized facade that reinforces the continuity of the building's form. In plan, the facade transforms from deep screening of the mechanical zones to carefully cal calibrated daylight and views at right-up areas. An expansive daylighting at atriums. In section, the facade flows from the building's smooth underbelly, raised above the civic greenway, to varied three-dimensional shading and screening profiles to its smooth roof. The changing nature of the enclosure makes legible the building's making, and then directly engages all who encounter it in a dialogue about the web of relationships between our buildings, the environment, and physical context. And for me, this is the crux of finding a way that these facades not only are performing in the, in the most um, um, ambitious way, but they're actually representing that performance to all those who, um, all those who address it. While this building stands only five stories tall, the data-driven design tools and methodologies utilized in its design are well-suited to address the specific opportunities and constraints of tall building design. Highly responsive tall building facades hold the promise of reestablishing a multidimensionality to our cities and fostering new expressive possibilities. All too often, Tall building facades set out to standardize the diversity of functions and occupants within. We're all accustomed to this. Cost constraints, manufacturing standards, construction methodologies, as well as, yes, architects' own formal interests in creating compositions that bring classical order, legibility, and identity to our urban environments have all played significant roles in homogenizing the urban environment and the design of tall building enclosures. If you doubt this point, consider this. Try in your mind, all of you sitting here today, to draw from memory where the change in use occurs in any of the tallest mixed-use towers in Shanghai. Hardly one has a facade that provides a clue. This 390-foot tall residential tower in construction in Brooklyn, New York, demonstrates how data-driven design can lead us away from this universalism toward more particular customized design solutions that are no less cost effective or arresting in their expressive potential. Located at the foot of the Brooklyn and Manhattan bridges, this 300,000 square foot mixed use development is comprised of a 32 story residential tower and a nine story hotel that defines a major street linking the burgeoning Dumbo district, and the waterfront to downtown Brooklyn. Initial three-dimensional view calculations and massing analysis quickly confirmed that, that maximizing the height of this building 
allowed it to capture the extraordinary views of Manhattan and yielding the highest value for the project. Not bad, huh? Our first analysis, three-dimensional parametric analysis, was developing a site-specific view calculator that ranked views in three-dimensional matrix across the site by such factors as the expansiveness of view and iconic features within a view. These are all judgment as designers we make, but it does allow us to, um, to capture better information, more information, and make smarter design decisions. Blocking and stacking of unit and room types then followed that view analysis to yield the highest rent rolls, while unit mixes and tiers were assessed to meet specific market demands. The colors here are um, suggesting all the different unit types throughout the building, studios, one bedrooms, two bedrooms, and three bedrooms. And, their, and the diversity of the mix is directly related to these view studies. The parametric model was then scripted to reassess the quality of specific views in plan and section in conjunction and relationship with glazing and natural ventilation, ventilation percentages that were required by our building codes in New York City. Living spaces in upper floors with the best views reach 80% glazing, while bedrooms in the lower floors incorporate less glazing. Party wall regulations on the east face of the tower allowed a maximum of 20%. So what you're seeing here are four different elevations, that party wall condition over on the far left. And it's a mapping against room types, bedrooms, studios, living spaces, across and around the building, taking into account views and values. One assumption we made at the beginning of the project was that all glazing would uniformly extend from floor to ceiling in response to the vector of views to Manhattan. So what this shows is that we start to adjust only the width of each glazing and solid panel to vary them along and across all of the facades in order to tune it, in order, again, to address energy, daylighting and view issues. Further scripting, in this case, screenshot of a grasshopper, established a maximum number of glazing sizes and panel types to ensure modularity and cost effectiveness. Perimeter structure, vertical heat pumps, other building systems were integrated into the model and were significant parametric determinants as well. As with the previous project, model outputs will be used to generate fabrication protocols and reduce fabrication and erection costs. The result is an ever-evolving facade that expresses the varied uses, views, and values of the project while reinforcing the singularity of the tower's sculptural form. The steady rhythm of the hotel facade that contains repetitive guest rooms, not seen here, gives way to a more particular and differentiated facade of the residential tower that appears to swell and constrict horizontally and vertically in response to shifting internal and external parameters. By embracing the specificity of occupation and use through this data-driven design process, the project, I think, charts a path in which facades can be more responsive to the programmatic diversity that enlivens not only projects like this, but our cities. Each level of a tall building has the opportunity to draw from an array of environmental parameters, which vary widely by orientation and height. As you know, wind, sun, rain, and temperature differ on each facade and at every elevation. While builders and architects have incorporated climatically responsive strategies for millennia, Data-driven design provides tools and methods that support new levels of integration and optimization and even expressiveness. This project, 1 William Street, which is a new 220-meter tall five-star Green Star Tower rising along Brisbane's riverfront for the Queensland state government, integrates facade strategies that extend the rich tradition of external shading in the region. Situated on a prominent urban site between the city and the Brisbane River, 
the three-sided plan affords a majority of each floor spectacular southern views, while the third face incorporates a multi-story sky garden that looks back on the city and supports a highly collaborative workplace environment. Again, beginning with extensive physical and energy modeling analysis, we were able to refine the building form in the very first conceptual parti stages of the project. Here we looked at orientation of the building, a simple aspect of rotating the building to not only provide two faces with fantastic views of the river, but in that rotation, simple um, analysis showed that we could decrease solar heat loads by up to 7% in that fundamental move. The facade is then tailored to the unique shading requirements of each face. Horizontal and vertical exterior sunshades extend from the aluminum curtain wall system in depths that vary around the perimeter of the tower to address specific solar angles and heat loads. These are exaggerated diagrams so that they're legible, but you can see on the left the transformation of vertical shading around the perimeter, and on the right the transformation of horizontal shading around the perimeter. Vertical sunshades are deepest, of course, at east and west exposures, decreasing incrementally in depth on the north and south. Horizontal sunshades extend farthest at the north exposure. Yes, we are in the southern hemisphere here. Um, and decrease incrementally as the facade curves gradually around to the south. With the building's primary orientation rotated in relationship to the sun's path, as well as this curvilinear built form of the building, the play of variability produces an ever-changing facade that expresses directly the tower's relationship to the sun. Deep vertical sunshades along east and west orientations of the tower transform continuously around the curves of the facade, first into shallow grids of vertical and horizontal shading elements before transforming again into horizontal shades. Additional energy modeling, and all of this is iterative and in real time, in collaboration with not only consultants, engineers, but also our clients. This energy modeling was shown that the strategy yielded a 33% reduction in peak solar loads. Now, this reduction isn't an ultimate reduction. This reduction was defined in relationship to a host of functional construction aesthetic criteria, and this is an incredibly important point. We could always dial up the amount of reduction of solar load, but as we dial that up, we might be imparting construction challenges and other cost issues. So this slide is, illustrates a series of modularity studies that quantified material amounts, shading percentages, and modularity in relationship to each other that was then used to develop cost models capable of assessing overall performance in terms of both construction and operating cost. That slide. With each of these increments of how many types of transformation we take around has um, radically different effects on that shading, but also on construction and cost. And being able to work through this early in the design process in collaboration with our clients, construction managers, and consultants is a key to success for these types of projects. In addition to responding to an array of programmatic environmental parameters, tall building facades must interface with their ha urban habitats and respond to the characteristics of the city, building adjacencies and even urban grain that vary widely from place to place, as well as from one side to another and one elevation to the next. Data-driven design provides additional tools and methodologies to create a single integrated environment for tall buildings and the urban context they reside within. The Four Seasons Hotel and Residence within the Delhi One development in India is a recent example that demonstrates the potential of responding directly to an urban context in the design of tall building facades. The Four Seasons Residences occupy three towers ranging in height from 28 to 39 stories and are situated within a dense urban development with four other high-rises. 
typical plan of one of the three towers. Reinterpreting the tradition of the Jali in Indian architecture, the three cruciform towers are wrapped in an oval of terraces and screens. Fairly conventional plan configuration in the upper left. The idea of wrapping it in this oval of screening to create an interstitial space between the enclosure of the units, terraces, and this exterior screen. This threshold between inside and outside mediates the heat of the sun and provides a wide variety of outdoor social spaces for the extended families who will call these residences their home. Following the initial briefing, blocking, and stacking of the residential units, another parametric model was developed that integrated unit and space types, privacy and view considerations, solar heat gain on an annual basis, as well as passive shading from adjacent towers. The diagram on the left is room types again, lighter color being more public, darker color being private. The diagram on the left is literally a, a, a yearly three-dimensional um, daylight analysis, and the figures you're seeing across that is because of adjacencies of towers, passive shading from one tower to the next, and this unfolded elevation, like a um, dressmaker's pattern, taking that screen and un unfolding it, flattening it, shows the variation in that screen that addresses the overlay of both the program and daylighting analysis. These modular screens are arrayed across fa facades with densities and geometries tuned to optimize these parameters. More public living spaces incorporate less densely spaced screens while private spaces integrate more densely spaced screens. The highest density screens screen the service areas, support areas, and building systems. Lower floors that might receive direct sunlight have higher density screening elements to ensure privacy, while higher floors in the same orientation might have lesser densities. The passive shading of one tower lens to another was calculated throughout the year and is incorporated in the density of screens, as you can see, through here. And through, and through the placement of screens to address views and shading between towers, each tower responds to the other and to its immediate context, as well as to the environment, expressing this interdependency. In the same development, the New Four Seasons Hotel extends this exploration of facade design in response to its immediate urban context. This tower's plan form diagram on the left is situated among a number of high-rise buildings. It's a 26-story tower, splits its service core at each end of the oblong tower where proximity to eight adjacent buildings is closest and views are most compromised. Guest rooms are arrayed along northeast and southwest exposures with premium views. And the split core also efficiently and effectively allows the tower's concrete building structure to slope around a large ballroom and banquet area placed under the tower's footprint. Again, the interpretation of the jolly screen in Indian architecture, the facade is compromised of vertical screens placed in front of the floor-to-ceiling glazing. In core and service areas, these screens made of perforated, anodized aluminum and varied bronze hues are rotated parallel to the exterior wall, cladding the solid masonry walls or mechanical louvers behind. The continuity of the building surface and curvilinear form is strengthened through the scripting of the vertical screens and panel geometry across each floor in continuous increments. This imparts to the facade an appearance of being set in motion. The building seemingly opens to views, closes along adjacent building frontages, and around the next bend opens again. The depth of geometry of each panel is calibrated to specific uses, solar angles, views, animating the facade further, which is noted in all of the information that streams along the bottom of the slide. A diagram of simply the panels moving around the facade and development of the overall facade, a three-dimensional matrix of varied parameters. The last example I want to leave you with is Chongqing Tower, a 431-meter-tall mixed-use tower in central China, which integrates parametric design, facade design in a very, very different way. The project is situated at the heart of Chongqing CBD and is comprised of a six-story retail podium, 32 stories of commercial office space, 28 stories of residential condominiums, 
and crowned by a 23-story, five-star star hotel, observation deck, restaurants, and club. Each use occupies a floor plate optimized for efficiency, effectivity, and flexibility. The form of the tower and its defining facades transforms continuously along its height in direct response to the transformation of the shape of the core as it accommodates changing lift, structural, and building system requirements. The silhouette of the tower continuously shifts as one moves around the building, capturing the dynamic qualities of the river and mountains that surround Chongqing. While this project is still in its very early stages, we've relied on a robust parametric modeling to optimize floor plans, building areas, building geometry, daylighting, solar loads, and views. Here, geometry optimization of the facade results in a uniform, vertically aligned curtain wall module over 92% of the facade. Early proof-of-concept studies such as this are critical to gain stakeholder confidence through the early stages of these projects. And there's much more work to do here. We are evolving um, concepts of a transforming density of ceramic frit around this building to respond to specific solar loads, programmatic requirements, passive shading, and structural views. In conclusion, data-driven parametric design opens new territory for the exploration of facades that respond more directly to occupation, orientation, and urban context. I hope this short outline has suggested to you what a future driven by data in support of more intelligence design might look like. Thank you very much. Thank you.